Here we're going to talk about in-place element structure, which can be found under structures and in-place element structure right here. What this does is it helps memory management internally through LabVIEW. So an example is I built this little function here, and all it's doing is, is grabbing an array, which I just filled with some ones. It is taking this, which is indexing array, and we can go to help, show help context to help us out here a little bit. All it's doing is returning an element or a subarray inside an array at the index. So my index right now is set to 2, so it'll return 0, 1, 2, this element out of the output. And all I'm doing is adding to 1. And then this here is our replace array subset. So it just takes in an array. It will put the new element into whatever index I ask it to. So I connected it still to index 2. It's taking in the element that was added and putting it back into the array, and that is the output. So if we run this function, we can see it takes in the array, adds it to 2, and then our second index, which is right here, all we did was add 1 to it. So this works all fine and dandy and everything's great. But the problem is actually right here where this splits. So I made this array doubles just to show what could happen in a scenario. So imagine if this array was, you know, a million elements long and they're all doubles. This what takes up a massive chunk of memory. When LabVIEW splits, and, and this is with anything, if anything splits here, even same as down here, two copies actually get made in memory. So if we highlight execution and click this single step, you can kind of see that there's two little like probe pieces that split off of both of these forks. That is actually two copies in memory of the data. And when we go to when we go to the next step though, this will get removed from memory and so will this. But those copies are are still there. So once a sub VI or any function gets the data and then returns it, then, then this memory is cleared out. But as, as of that one first moment when it splits, we actually we've actually doubled our memory for both of this for this array and this index. So a way to get around this, especially like if you had a really large array, is using this place element structure. So if you need more help, you can go to this details tab and I always need to come in here whenever I use this and these are your options that are given with this structure and the most common are typically the arrays but you also have some for waveforms and you know data value reads and you can click on these and you can learn more about them in this example I'm just using the first one which is add array index and replace element so if we click on this you can actually see that these blocks match up now. So what we can do is we can remove all these. And now we can rearrange everything like this. And if we can see, let's just change the element to the third index and we run this it'll actually perform the same operation. And if we looked over here, our element changed. This was the element 2, and now this is element 3 that was changed. So it functions the same way. And what this now did was, instead of splitting in memory this array into two pieces just for that temporary operation, it knows basically just not to do that. So only one copy of this array and one copy of this index was used in memory behind the scenes when this structure is used. And you can right click and add other ones if you need. So for example, if you were unbundling a bunch of elements doing a similar process, this is one of those structures that is used when making highly efficient code, especially if you have really large arrays and if there's a lot of replacing elements or initializing many elements. And if stuff happened like that original example I had up top, this is a much more efficient way of doing that. 
this is important for things too with not a lot of memory so like for example this laptop I'm on has a lot of memory so you never really notice it but especially if you're working with smaller systems that may only have a few hundred megabytes stuff like this can really come in handy so I hope this is helpful and stay tuned for more